Thanks for clicking on the video. My name is Tom Alsop, and today we're going to look at the importance of shoulder rotation when you're hitting your serve. So we're going to look at some video of what the greatest players are doing. I'm going to talk about what your average tennis player struggles with and why they struggle to do this. And then I'm going to give you some tips, some exercises to help you to rotate your body more effectively. So if we start by taking a look at Andy Roddick's serve, I want you to notice two things. One, look at the shoulder rotation. By the time he lands, his right shoulder his, is way ahead of his left. A lot of shoulder rotation there. The second thing I want to point out, he's not really jumping that high. His focus is far more on rotation than it is on exploding up to go get the ball. Now let's take a look at Federer because he's doing something that's pretty interesting. When he hits the ball, he's not actually at his highest point. You can see once he hits it, he still goes up and up and up after contact. So again, he's not trying to get to his highest point. He's also thinking about rotating. Also, you don't want to be fully stretched when you are hitting the tennis ball. You can see here with Federer, you see how his racket is to the inside of the angle of his arm. So it's not quite a 45 degree angle, but it's kind of close to it. He's very comfortable hitting the ball there. He's going to be strong with his hand and it's going to allow him to rotate, pronate through the shot. A lot of people try and stretch really high. And there's, there's quite a few problems with this. I'm going to get on court and explain what some of these problems are. I think the most common mistake that people make is trying to stretch as high as they can to hit the ball. Two things go wrong when you do this. First of all, the contact point gets a little bit stretched out. So the hand and the racket tends to be in a straight line like this because you're trying to get to your highest point. Instead of contacting the ball from slightly lower and having a stronger position, you can see now the racket is slightly to the inside. This is very important for having that stability at the point of contact. You do not want to be stretched as high as possible because once you hit it, the racket tends to do this instead of pronating to the inside. The other issue with trying to stretch as high as you can is people tend to mess up the timing, the coordination of the motion where they jump in and then they're on the way down as the strike and the tennis ball. Because again, the best players will be jumping through the hit. If you're someone who's jumping and then hitting, you won't be able to rotate your body into the shot. You'll just be able to flick at it. You'll land like this and you won't be able to get any power. So if you're looking to develop your coordination, or in this case, looking to rotate a little bit better into your serve, I highly recommend staying on the floor stay grounded because it's far easier to rotate into the serve just standing on the ground than it is to try and do it with a jump. Now there's two different ways of practicing this exercise. One of them, as you can see here, I'm keeping my back foot on the ground as I rotate my shoulders. This is a great exercise for players who eventually want to jump because when you do jump, what you're looking for is your shoulders to rotate and your back leg to move backwards. I think there's going to be a lot of players who struggle with this exercise because keeping that back foot on the ground and rotating your shoulders requires quite a lot of balance, also requires a lot of flexibility. So for you guys, I would recommend just pivoting around your front leg as you see me doing in this video. And this is something you'll see the pros doing when they're warming up, when they're trying to get the time and the rhythm, just that coordinated service motion. You'll see them staying on the floor and pivoting around the front leg. It's just a great way to get your body involved. You'll feel yourself being able to really rotate into the shot. And for most people, like you're going to feel like you can get way more power. I'm going to leave you with a conversation I had on this subject with my friend and business partner, Slavi. 
Slava helps me with my video analysis clients and he's always got something helpful to say. It's always interesting and I think you're going to enjoy this one. Trying to reach maximum height will take away so much from your serve that it's not worth it. So you're not going to improve your serve by jumping up higher to try to make contact where John, John Isner does. So don't worry about maximum height. I would worry more about this distance. Mike Tyson. What about it? Mike Tyson always spot people that are higher than him, right? They're taller. What would Mike Tyson look if he tried to jump up just so he can punch at the level of the other guy? But that's in essence what people are trying to do if they're trying to jump up to hit serves. That's what they're trying to do. It's like, oh, I'm going to get that five extra inch height and I'm going to, you know what I mean? That's not going to do nearly as much as starting your shot from the ground, being connected to the ground, using the friction between your legs and the ground to power your stroke and start your damn kinetic chain. If you guys are interested in being able to hit a better kick serve, I'm going to leave a link to a free video that I put together in the description below. Thanks for watching.